Hon är inte är i is kulten en kallastoit builden raktas builden dåligt att sten chanat och så kallt jag iljag ta fyr kid fortsätter att glädja sig till oras nutron och så har kan amma kan hina det är kan man vän kille säger färre fyr kid fortsätter att glädja och så kan höra här or in a special tenach feature in the plinisha the carnival uktron of hervish just na the gail harla eh etonishte ministers members of the rocktus distinguished guests members of the council of state and particularly above all else the people we honor this evening our guests of honor the recipients of this year's presidential distinguished service award for the irish abroad i think that you are almost welcome may i especially welcome those who have traveled distances to be with us 117 years ago james connolly shemus o'connell one of our finest patriots wrote words which still ring through the generations to us today Ireland without our people is nothing to me more than any other leader of our revolutionary generation he as a migrant understood that our nation should be defined less in terms of territory or geography and very much more in terms of a people a people bound together by a shared culture and heritage a language a consciousness of shared historical experience all of which together should contribute in our potentially finer moments to a commitment to building a more humane and a more just society such a commitment dear friends is exemplified by the achievements of our honored guests this evening and that is why we are assembled here this evening to honor and pay tribute to their work and for you will meet balian sha august three slim low august gone week is low but sakten made it a janta ka deri na ka sakko hoire he ni heri ni hala the presidential distinguished service award for the irish abroad is an opportunity for us to recognize those who have as you will hear through dedication and tireless work extended the boundaries of human knowledge fostered peace where there was none elevated the standing and reputation of irish people throughout the world and demonstrated through their practical actions an inspirational solidarity and compassion for others made such a special contribution as it has continues to exemplify what i have referred to already as the very best of irishness a humane cosmopolitanism one that is powerfully moral in the sense of immanuel kant is min lam foisha ara rev ni hawan na fight chori den karn vier un utron um her vis just na de koil arlar ak rev muinter ke sa koitje kom ak sta sisem ker hash the right mara gurt me ak ev akor mor le ve linen art i do also want to welcome not just our guests of honors the recipients of the presidential distinguished service awards but very much their family and friends who have come to share this experience with them i know that many of you will have traveled a great distance as I've said already and you are so welcome in the home of the president or sinutron and we also remember too uh, those who cannot be with us tonight as 2017 moves to a close it is worth reflecting on the great changes which are now underway both globally and here at home for all those of us for, who consider themselves part of the irish nation the commemoration of the easter rising of 1916 last year brought an important reflection that has led to renewed pride and interest in the greater and deeper understanding of our history one that encourages a confidence of our place among the nations of the world and our responsibilities and awareness that there is much which must still be done to truly vindicate the promises of our revolutionary decade we took steps towards an inclusive version of our history engaging as we did in the task of ethical remembering a task which will be even more challenging i suggest in the coming years one of the achievements we made in last year i think was we remember the contribution of women and their role in both the revival movement and in the founding moments of our state we meet now at a time that is one again of profound change not least change for our in our for our nearest neighbor and great challenges await us in the coming decades 
And I must say in that, I so wish the Tonish there were uh, in his new responsibilities and indeed the ones he already uh, has undertaken. But we're now being confronted with the consequences as well, I think, at global level, the consequences of our economic and behavioural models on the global temperature, consequences that, which will grow ever more serious. And we're challenged to make as well a new pattern of trade that can take account of demographic changes, achieve a new sustainable vision of development, and help what is only the beginning of the end of the recurring appalling cycles of global poverty and crisis. We Irish, as a migratory people, and more than that, perhaps more than other people, we must be aware of the deep moral imperative of welcoming those fleeing war, persecution, famine and natural disasters. These challenges will test us all, and today, in recognising and celebrating the best of our Irish contribution to Irish communities abroad and at home, and to the global community, we are given examples, sampling, of the moral, mental and material resources that are available, and that we, as a diasporic people, can bring to bear and fruition. Now, more than ever, the compassion, empathy and generosity of spirit so characteristic of Irish people in our better moments and displayed by all of our awardees here today is necessary if we are to meet the challenges I have mentioned. These values have been given an inspiring expression, for example, in the work of the indefatigable Mary T. Murphy, who has spent her life caring and supporting those afflicted by illness, drought, conflict and poverty. Some of our recipients this evening are working with the continent of Africa foregrounded in their work. A continent that carries many of the several consequences, of the most severe consequences of global warming. A continent that by 2050 will have 26% of the global population of the planet and 38% of the young people of the planet. It was my honour to visit Mary in Gambella in Ethiopia in November, in November 2014, and I had the opportunity to see at first hand the impact of her tireless work with those fleeing famine, persecution and war. Her dedication of her life's work to helping people on the continent of Africa, in the Democratic Republic of Congo, in Sierra Leone, in Burundi, in Ethiopia, is a testament to the best of the humanitarian spirit. And it is humbling to consider the influence that I know that Mary's work has had on so many people. Another of today's awardees, who has also had an enormous impact on the lives of people living in Africa, and will continue even more so to have an impact, is Dr William Campbell. In 2015, Dr Campbell became the first Irish-born scientist to win the Nobel Prize for Medicine in recognition of his discovery of thermectin, the derivatives of which are used to treat two of the world's most damaging parasitic diseases. As a result of his pioneering research, river blindness has been almost eradicated, while the spread of lymphatic filariasis has been significantly reduced, positively impacting on the lives of millions of people. And Dr Campbell's Nobel lecture, which I read, <coughs> was so impressive, particularly to scholars, as it spoke of the process of discovery involved, and it is truly an example of the best of modern science, simple in its origins, multidisciplinary in its development, and universal and generous in its impact. Our connection with Irish America and its influence on our history and historical scholarship cannot ever be overestimated. In present-day Ireland, this continues, and in a, a unique contribution to post-conflict healing. In 1975, Dennis Mulcahy, a New York Police Department bomb disposal officer, founded Project Children. And over the course of 36 years, this project brought over 20,000 young people, Catholic and Protestant, from Northern Ireland, to engage and encounter each other in the safe environment of North America. And Mr Mulcahy has justly been a nominee for the Nobel Peace Prize. <coughs> Mr Mulcahy's Project Children and the hundreds of families who, are support, who supported the hosting of thousands of children from Northern Ireland during the Troubles were the subject of a recent documentary, How to Defuse a Bomb, 
The Project Children's Story, narrated by another of today's recipients, Mr Liam Neeson, who unfortunately his schedule didn't allow him to be with us this evening. Liam Neeson, of course, himself has made an enormous contribution as a voice for Ireland on the global stage of international entertainment and through his support for the Lyric Theatre in Belfast, where he started his career, and the New Irish Arts Centre New York, where he now lives and has played a vital role in Irish culture, both at home and abroad. Indeed, one of the televisual highlights of last year's commemorations was the historical documentary 1916, with which Liam was centrally involved. Another representative of Irish America being honoured this evening is Patricia Harty. Patricia co-founded the Irish America magazine in 1985, which has, since its inception, become a powerful voice on a range of political, economic, social and cultural themes that are of importance to the Irish in America. I just want to say that voices and activists like Patricia are integral to maintaining the strength of relationship and feeling between Ireland and the United States, which has been and is so important to generations of Irish people at home and abroad. Our post-Brexit circumstances, if I might refer to them as that, have sharpened our gaze towards Asia long before, of course, we have had distinguished connections with Asia through such thinkers as Lafcadio O'Hearn. And tonight we celebrate our contemporary connections to Japan through a very special person, Hideki Memura. Although born and raised in Japan, has worked to promote Ireland for many years. He was instrumental in arranging the very first St. Patrick's Day Parade in Tokyo more than 25 years ago and has continued this work throughout Japan, which he carries out with this great affection for Ireland, Irish people and all things Irish. <clears throat> Our two countries, island nations, in turn at the periphery of Asian Europe, share not only a unique and ancient culture, but also what I believe is to be a future of infinite possibilities, Fedrukti Gonchorum, which are exemplified by the work of Hideki Mamura. Coming nearer home to our nearest neighbour, between 1955 and 1960, a quarter of a million Irish people left as emigrants, approximately 50,000 a year. They went, women and men, mostly to Britain. Being honoured this evening is Jacqueline O'Donovan, a hugely respected and successful member of the Irish business community in London. Her pride in her Irish heritage and commitment to the Irish community has been reflected in all the work she has been doing and does with our community in London, including as executive board member of the Women's Irish Network. And with her typical Irish spirit, she has been a generous donor and sponsor. Her generosity has included the giving of a most precious resource, her own time, to a number of Irish charities, including the Brent Irish Advisory Service, London Irish Centre, London Irish Film Festival, the Irish Youth Foundation, and the Irish Cultural Centre Hammersmith, and of course the St Patrick's Day Parade in London. I have said that we are a migratory people, and continuing our migratory emphasis, another Irish, another voice of the Irish in Britain is with us being honoured this evening. Because part of that wave of the 1950s is Bernard Canavan, an artist whose distinctive work addresses the economic and social experience of Irish migrants during the 20th century. Bernard Canavan has had a number of highly acclaimed exhibitions on these themes both in Ireland and London. I know that one of them was opened by Gerard O'Tuhig, a member of the Council of State, who spoke to me about how strong the images were. The themes <coughs> used in those exhibitions are intrinsic to our experience as a people, and through his art, writing and scholarship, including as an editor of the History Workshop Journal, Bernard has done so much to bring the experiences of what he, and we agree, is called the forgotten Irish in Britain into our collective consciousness. And it has been through works such as his, such as his visual art, that we are impelled to remember those who should never be forgotten, whose circumstances of origin and destination and are an essential thread in the tapestry of our history. To be forgotten, Paul Ricoeur wrote, is to die twice. 
There is then a vital moral significance to Bernard's art, and I'm very pleased that the producers of the documentary on his life, currently being prepared, will give witness to the appreciation of the Irish people for his work that is expressed through the award he will receive this evening. There is hardly an adult on this island who will not recognise the name of General John de Chastelain, which is synonymous with the peace process in Northern Ireland and the tireless work of countless people to achieve that hard-won peace. General de Chastelain helped forge the Belfast Agreement, implemented the blueprint for peace on this island, signed on Good Friday 1998. We would not have achieved that historic agreement without the generous assistance received from our friends abroad at crucial moments, and recent events have reinforced the centrality of the Good Friday Agreement to the future of our island, and we must work as tirelessly today to maintain it, as General de Chastelain and others did to achieve it. Professor Marion Elliott is another friend of the Irish peace process, particularly as a member of the International Peace Commission, the Opsal Commission, and was, she was, of course, co-author of its report, A Citizen's Inquiry. She was a co-founder of Irish Historians in Britain and the British Association for Irish Studies, as well as director of the Institute for Irish Studies at the University of Liverpool, of which I have the honour to be joint patron with His Royal Highness Prince Charles. She did so much to help establish Irish scholarship on Ireland in Great Britain, and she has been a, per a pioneer of the pursuit of Irish studies in Britain. We are deeply indebted to her for that historical scholarship, a scholarship that has deepened our understanding of the role of religion in the history of the island, that illuminated the lives of Wolfe Tone and Robert Emmett, and which indicates the international dimension, which sometimes get neglected, of the United Irishmen. May I take this opportunity as President of Ireland, Maruk Tronaherin, I want to take this opportunity of thanking the members of the high-level panel who deliberated on this year's Presidential Distinguished Service. Mr Niall Burgess, the Secretary-General of the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. Mr Martin Fraser, the Secretary-General of the Department of the Taoiseach. Mr Arthur Leary, the Secretary-General of my own office. Ms Sally O'Neill Sanchez, President Declan Kybert. Father Barbie Gilmore and Mr Kingsley Aikens. I'm delighted to see so many of them to all her Wilship Lynn and Acht. Agus mar fakal square is mean la mo wika se guala gok in dinner dar vai chori dan me da tar janta ake. Agus a tar yen of alge fosas a tar lerno fiu an arakata san girig. Quere nor gwe dae bre iu dior dier kona halye gomor le kuiz gus ko kuur gus ko il ne herin agus es kush broid agus ins broid shiver fada. May I finally say I want to thank you again for what I have just said in summary, to thank each and every one of our award recipients for all that you have done and continue to do, the examples you have given. And here you are this evening with us in the darkness of winter. Your hard work and your respect of homes has added to the reputation of our nation and you are a source of pride and inspiration to us all. Thank you for that. Thank you all for being with us this evening. Thank you.